television's probing eye had not penetrated Paisley Park before, access was usually for journalists only. He's often been faulted for making what seemed at the time to be very erratic decisions, like to build a $10 million recording studio in the middle of Minneapolis. To most people in the music industry, when he built it, it seemed insane. They thought he was building his own personal graceland, sort of a playpen for himself. And even if he wasn't, there was no way this was going to make money. It just seemed ludicrous, and it seemed likely that this would bankrupt him. And it's funny, because if he had decided to buy $10 million worth of cocaine and shove it up his nose in a West Hollywood uh, mansion, everyone would have said, oh, that's okay, that's okay, that's fine, that's a rock star. It's sort of a Prince Taj Mahal. I mean, it's very much reflective of his music and his personal side. Everything seems to have, in some way, been constructed or directed by Prince. The heart-shaped mirror above the bed and the, the pastel colors and all of this. I mean, it's all kind of reflective of, of his personality. And there's a certain sensuality to the whole place that I think says Prince. Paisley Park is um, his playhouse. <laughs> it's his toy. It allows him to go and create every day, all day. It's almost Prince's inner sanctum. But on the other hand, you know, uh, the guy is up at 10 o'clock in the morning, which is unheard of in rock and roll, and the place runs like a train schedule. The, the impression I walked away with that struck me the most was that it is a seamless fantasy, that the seamless pop star, in that you never see Prince not being Prince. He is completely dressed to the nines, smelling heavenly, carrying on with this regal air all the time, day and night. 